the US just doesn't have cheap energy to power their data centers sustainably. Given enough time, they will lose out to the Chinese for sure. Yes, relying on the Saudis for cheap energy might work, but it means constructing hundreds of billions of dollars in data centers all the way in the Middle East, not a very stable region to be sure. That also means a ton of taxpayer dollars flowing to Saudi Arabia and creating local jobs there. It essentially goes against America first, especially amongst his voter base. So Trump is going to have to choose. Is winning the AI race much more important than jobs in the US? And to what extent will he push the US economy in order to compete against China? And besides AI chips, the US is also eager for the Saudis to buy US weapons. The US likes to act coy about selling their gear to the Saudis, but considering their current situation, they desperately need the money. MBS has even managed to sideline the issue of normalization with Israel, so this is a big win for the Saudis. They are getting what they want by correctly identifying US desperation and weakness. Maybe the only industrial sector left and that's relevant in the US is the MIC, the military industrial complex. Everything else just doesn't make sense. Try making an EV in a US factory and exporting it out. Or fighter jets and missiles, well, they still have many takers. But we can always trust our best friend to hype up the deal. Now, part of me thinks Besson is trying to surpass Latnik in his own special way. Our great economy and the reserve currency status of the dollar. So they are willing to put in a trillion dollars of investment into their portfolio that they already have here. The U.S. is the premier destination in the world. And then three, our technology and innovation economy. Uh, again, they want to invest in that. They want to buy our chips. Now, this is hilarious. He's like a football manager trying to cheer on his team that is down 10-0. But hey, that's best and all right. His policies might not be the best, but comedy-wise, he's a 10 easily, solid 10.